Hi, um, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for staying around until uh, this time. I'm about to fall asleep myself, so like uh, I'll try to be quick. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this talk is about uh, using POI tracker, which stands for package of interest. Uh, it's still in early development, so we don't have a cool logo yet, but um, I'm probably going to try and you know like uh, have that uh, taro based uh, dish as a logo. Um, yeah, so uh, let's start. Um, um, my name is Michelle. Um, if you have been in Fedora for a while, you might know me as Michelle Salim. I just changed my name last year, long story. Ask me later. Uh, yeah. And I'm not sure. Okay. That's, that line is not supposed to be there, so ignore it. Um, I've been a long time Fedora contributor. Um, I've recently started working on Apple and CentOS. Um, Hyperscale as well as part of um, as part of work. I work at the Linux user space team at Meta. Uh, we basically uh, manage um, well interface between like um, what we what are deployed on our servers and like um, and the upstream communities. So yeah, um, that's um, let's jump into um, why. Uh, you might want to um, care about um, packages and why you need a tool to help you do that. So, um, like, um, if you are one person, like, uh, working on, like, uh, just, like, um, your pet servers, uh, you might be able to say, like, I just manage everything by hand. And even then, you might basically uh, not remember why you install a package two years ago and why it doesn't, like, uh, work when you upgrade your system. So context gets lost of the time. If you don't write things down, like uh, you probably don't remember why uh, something happens. Uh, packaging is not a one-off. Like uh, you might say, hey, um, I, I need to get like um, a version of um, BAT um, available on my uh, system. And then like um, two years down the line, you don't remember why like uh, you need it. Like uh, do you still need it? Maybe the project that you wanted it for um, got canceled, so you don't actually need to uh, care about the package anymore. Or like, um, oh, you know, you package this and then you forgot about it and then there's a CVE that was fixed in Fedora and you never fix it in Apple. Um, or you might be like, um, like a lot of people like uh, doing packaging, you might have 200 packages. Um, some of them are more important than others and you want to prioritize which ones you have to uh, fix first if something happens. And also, I'm getting to the point where I have like a lot of constraints on my free time, and like I, I don't really want to um, do everything by hand because I won't, you know, like, I won't have time to do that. Yes, this is the main motivation, really. Like, <laughs> okay, um, who might be interested in using this tool? This is all me wearing my different hats, basically. Um, you might be a sysadmin, you want to manage a bunch of servers. Uh, you might not just care about packages that you maintain yourself. You might care about other people's packages that you use. And you know you cannot just say, hey, uh, I want to see like all the Bugzilla uh, issues affecting these packages because you're not on the CC list. You might be a packager. Um, you don't care just about your own packages. You have to say like, hey, you know, like if if a package I depend on break, I want to know about it. You might be maintaining a package in Apple. You have another upstream, and like if the, um, you might want to be, be able to like uh, say, hey, um, if there's a new version in Fedora, I might want to uh, backport it to Apple. So two years ago, I introduced um, this tool called eBranch at um, what became CentOS Connect. It used to be called CentOS Dojo. Uh, the latest version is up on PyPy and there's a link to the GitHub repo. And the motivation at the time was basically um, we, um, we run CentOS on our dev servers. Um, we have a lot of engineers who say, hey, you know, like uh, I'm more productive if I have this uh, Rust tool available. Can we have it installed? 
and at the time it's like, well, in, um, in uh, CentOS Stream 8, uh, the RPM uh, ecosystem, the RPM tooling is too old. So basically, you cannot package um, Rust uh, packages the same way you do in Fedora. You have no choice but to actually just vendor in all the dependencies. And it's easy, right? Like, um, but uh, if you want to uh, package Rust for Apple 9, you have to basically bring in like the entire Rust stack. So, um, and it's kind of almost impossible to do by hand because there's too many dependencies to track. And um, so basically I wrote a tool for that. It basically does the dependency analysis for you. You can basically just say, hey, um, so these are, the, these are everything you need to build in this order to, have, to be able to package this. And by the way, these are the dependency cycles that you need to break yourself. Otherwise, like, because not everything is buildable. Um, so over the past two years, we've uh, imported a lot of packages into, um, into Apple 9. I think at some point I was probably like in the top five for um, uh, Apple contributors just by packaging all this Rust stuff. Um, Golang is a similar story um, with a slight hitch uh, that I'll mention later. So we have a F, a FZF, a Fuzzy Finder, um, available in Apple 9. Uh, so if you have to work on a CentOS machine and you like Fuzzy Finder, you can just install it. And most recently, um, Fedora and CentOS uh, still run mailing lists on um, RHEL 7, and that needs to be migrated. So the Mailman 3 stack is now available both in Fedora and in uh, Apple 9. Welcome. This is harder to do than Ras and Golang because uh, in Fedora, Ras and Golang uh, packages are maintained communally. So as long as you are in the right SIG, you have access to branch and build everything, which is not the case in Python. So um, eBranch now has the ability to file um, branch requests and ping them for you. And then like if uh, nothing happens, you can ask, um, you can basically like, it will format a template that you can file to release engineering saying, hey, please give me access to the package. Uh, this is not released yet, but it's available in Git if you want to use it. So, why do we need another tool then, right? Like, um, it's problem solved. Uh, you can get any package you want um, in, um, in branch from Fedora to Apple using eBranch if you use, if you use CentOS on your machine. Well, that's the first part of the life cycle. You, you have a package, you can get it installed now, and then if, if you leave it at that, uh, it's, um, it doesn't address any maintenance issue. And also, like, um, as I said, like, um, context, right? Like, uh, why did I branch this, like, two years ago? Do I still care about it? Should I just, like, abandon the package? I don't know. <laughs> um, and who wanted this package? Like, if it's, like, um, if a team need it and then they don't uh, need it anymore, like, um, and you have uh, little time, you probably should just, like, abandon the package. Um, eBranch basically gives you a dependency tree of what you need to build something, but a dependency tree is not static. As the package gets updated, um, like uh, what you need to build it change, and you don't actually want to carry around all this information. So we want to distinguish, these are the things we care about, and these are the things that we just happen to uh, use uh, to build it. Um, and also dependencies cut both ways. Uh, you care about what you need um, to be able to build and run your package. You should also, if you maintain a library, you should also care about what packages are dependent on your package that you might need to know, like uh, otherwise you might issue an update that break them. And that was not a problem with eBranch either because, well, you know, like uh, its focus is bringing in new packages. So obviously like anything that depend on that package cannot be in the repository yet. Um, so there is this other thing called content uh, resolver input that we have been kind of uh, using to keep track of packages. Um, ELN uh, uses it to basically uh, declare these are the Fedora packages that we care about in CentOS stream. So we want to kind of build it in ELN, which is like a rawhide for enterprise Linux to make sure that we can build the latest version 
um, against like uh, the CentOS configuration. Uh, there is an, uh, ELN Extras is similar. Like uh, these are the packages that we care about in Apple. They are not going to be in CentOS stream, but we want to also make sure that hey, when the new Apple um, is released, uh, we want to make sure the packages we want there are buildable. So there are some links to like uh, examples. Like uh, this, uh, the first is the list of packages that we care about uh, to have a mailman building. And the second one is the packages that um, the hyperscale SIG care about. Um, content resolver input, uh, basically it's like, it's just a YAML file. So you can add any context that you want um, as comments. But if you're like me, you work for a company, you might basically say like, I'm okay with you knowing that I care about these packages, but I don't really want to tell you why I care about them. Because it's like, oh, maybe it's a hush hush internal project or maybe it's just like, well, it's not relevant. If you don't like YAML, like uh, the downside of this is that you have to edit YAML files as well. Uh, yeah, so as I was saying, like um, you might not want to disclose like why you care about a package and anyway, it's not relevant. Uh, content resolver input, uh, this, came out, uh, this came up in some discussion yesterday. It also tracks uh, binary RPMs and if you're a packager, you really care more about the source RPM, right? Like, um, like when you look up a bug in Bugzilla, you look it up by source, not by, uh, not by binary. So, so I came up with this tool called POI Tracker. Um, I just pushed it up to like a PyPy uh, this morning. Uh, the idea is that you have an inventory of packages. Um, right now, the format is heavily tied to content resolver input, but the idea is that uh, in the future, this is more general, and you might want to track other things, like packages for other distributions. Uh, you might want to track uh, the upstream projects so you know if there's a new release. And um, there is a CLI that you can use to basically um, do most of the operations you care about automatic, um, programmatically instead of uh, by editing files. Like you can create an inventory, you can say, hey, uh, please add this uh, new package that I care about uh, to this uh, inventory. Or like, oh, I don't care about this, uh, just remove it. And it stores uh, the data as JSON right now, but uh, we can look at adding uh, additional backends in the future. And there is an exporter to um, content resolver input. So you can basically just use this tool, maintain an inventory, and then like, um, export only the publicly relevant part um, to YAML, and then you can basically just update the um, uh, content resolver uh, repo with, with, uh, with the file you changed. Uh, there's an issue tracker, like uh, if you find anything that doesn't work or you want to file um, feature requests, you can go there. Uh, so these are a few things that I didn't have time to implement because life got in the way. But um, yeah, like uh, if you care about these packages, you might want to say like, hey, what bugs are currently open against like uh, this that I need to care about? Um, you might want to basically say, I want to see like if, uh, what are the issues like, that are filed upstream that I might need to uh, fix? Um, you might want to know if your dependencies have issues, um, especially if they are security issues. Um, if, you, if you work in like a, if you maintain Rust or Golang packages, those are statically compiled. So not only are you affected by issues, but once they are fixed, you need to rebuild your package to pick up the fix. In Fedora, the, the Golang story is even scarier because um, when, you, when, you gener uh, when you dynamically generate build requirements uh, for a Go package, the version information gets stripped. So you really, really want to basically, you cannot just say, hey, you know, like if, um, if my upstream has been fixed to require the, the fixed version of a dependency, if I rebuild it, it will either succeed or fail if it's too old. No, uh, <laughs> I found out myself when I rebuild something and it's like it's uh, picking up the old uh, dependency and unless you know there is a CVE that you need to fix, you, you will not uh, notice. If you are packaging for Apple, you might want to know if the Fedora version is new and like, hey, uh, I need to update uh, these versions. Or 
well, you might want to like uh, like uh, know like if um, if dependent packages have bugs that might be caused by um, by your package, and you might want to be able to support um, multiple repos, not just um, Apple, for example. But yeah, um, so enough talk. I'm going to show the tool in action. Um, so it's uh, published on PyPy now, so you can just do pip install, and it should uh, install it with all the dependencies. And then you can just say, hey, I want to create a new inventory. Um, this is, um, I'm using a real life example for this. Like this will actually create something that's very similar to what is uh, currently uh, checked in. So let's say like, hey, um, uh, I want to create an inventory for packages that Meta uh, care about. So that creates an inventory. And then you can say, um, now I want to track this package. Um, Rust um, below is, um, it's like a top. It's basically a, it's a resource a monitoring tool, and I want to be I want to declare myself as the person in charge of this package, and the reason I want to package this is I want to make sure that below um, can be built in um, Apple. As you notice, uh, there's a typo. Below doesn't have two Ws. I had a mechanical keyboard that actually keeps making this problem, like it will keep repeating keys. Really annoying. So. So the file that it generates um, has has a typo, and you might say, "Oh shoot, no!" Like, um, so you can just say, "Okay, let's let's remove uh, below uh, from that list because I mistyped it." And if, and when you show the configuration, you can see it's gone. And then we can add it correctly, and you can say, "Okay, now I have a configuration. I have an inventory that works. Uh, let's publish it." Um, Let's export it as a content resolver input. So this is a YAML that um, that you can use to generate a workload um, and then commit it to GitHub. So hey, um, this is Meta SIG package. Um, this is the description for the inventory. This is the maintainer. As you can see, like uh, the reason why your packaging below is no longer uh, listed. So yeah. Um, I didn't get much time to actually like uh, add more functionality to the tool, but like I'm, uh, do people have questions or do we people have um, feature requests or um, experiences managing packages like this? Uh, thank you for the tool. It looks very interesting. Um, so, as you might have noticed, I work on former projects. We also package it with RPMs, which is a lot. We have I don't I tried to count it, but I couldn't. Um, but it's like 200 packages or something, which we all maintain in a uh, repository. Uh, we currently have more monolithic one big repository. Uh, we have actually a tool based based on Ansible, where we abuse or reuse the Ansible inventory as a well package listing. Um, and I'm wondering if this could be interesting for us. Um, I, one thing I noticed that is very interesting is um, sort of dependency chaining, because we now also have the, the problem that you know we're going to build a new uh, EL version that comes out, and how do you deal with that? Um, can you tell me more about the sort of dependency chain tracking that you have? Uh, yeah, um, so that's currently part of eBranch, but um, so what it does is it basically just uses. Um, uh, right now, it's using a repo query, but I'm looking at um, splitting out uh, the dependency uh, management um, uh, part into um, into a common library that both eBranch and um, POI will actually use. The idea is basically you just um, do repo query. Uh, it will it will show you what what are the build requirements for a package, and then you sub and then you take away f and then you can check like uh, hey, uh, what which of these packages are already available. And then you you take them out from the list, uh, and you have a set of dependencies that are missing, and then you keep um, iterating. So let's say you have 20 dependencies, three are missing, like uh, in Apple nine, and then you re you recurse on those, and you say, of these three dependencies, how do I build them? 
and go on until you have um, until you have a complete set. Okay, so you, you definitely do need repository actually to be built in and query it and for iteratively continue building. Uh, you don't. You you do the query ahead of time before you start building. And yeah, but once it's built, then for the next chain, you need the repository to query it again. Oh, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, eBranch has this thing that basically like uh, it uses Network X um, to actually uh, do the dependency graph, so, and you can say like, hey, um, give. Uh, it can compute the build order for you, so it will tell you of this 100 package which are the ones that I can build straight away because they have no uh, missing dependencies. And once those are done, what are the next batch of packages I can build? Could you create this, um, a local repository and then basically have all the source RPMs and then calculate from there, or? Uh, yeah, you can. Um, well, that part is not automated, but with the list of the pa packages you need to build in the order, you can, you can just build all of them locally. Uh, right now, it's actually kind of required because um, with Rust packages in particular, uh, there are some dependencies that you don't need to build a package, but you need to install them. And if you don't do a local build to verify that you can actually install what you built, you might miss out on things. And then people yell at you and you publish an update on body and like um, some of the packages cannot be installed. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll play with it and see what I can use from it. Yeah, uh, I... Yeah, I made some notes already. Uh, from uh, we should chat. Um, I'm I'm on Matrix, so like uh, uh, either like find me after this or like um, send me a message. Yeah, uh, I'll ping you after. Cool. Thanks. Any more questions? Well, thank you, Michelle, for that. Thank you all.